Um, Sally, uh, tell us a bit about the, the, the inspiration for this violin piece that, that Fenella is going to be playing. Well, I was about to write um, a solo violin piece for Anthony Marwood and hadn't got any ideas. And then a friend happened to send me this new translation of the Anglo-Saxon poem, The Seafarer, which was written in the ninth century. And I was fascinated by this translation. It was by Charles Harrison Wallace, who's half Swedish and half Scottish. And he'd very much used a kind of, he'd take, he'd, it was a Nordic take on the poem. And, and it was very much highlighting the similarities between the Scandinavian languages and the Scots dialect. And I found that really interesting. And also the fact that in Scandinavia and also in Northern Scotland, you very often see a ship hanging in the nave of the church. Mm -hmm. And I think this poem is in fact an allegory for, for the journey of life. I don't know what you think. Well, I, I mean, I think a lot of people have different ideas about it. Some people feel that there's a sort of pagan three quarters of the poem and then a little a, a sort of add on part that turns it into a Christian allegory and a, a sort of fable about, you know, the journey of life, which is tough and everything. But then at the end, there's going to be a wonderful uh, heaven to go to. Um, and uh, there's a lot of divided feelings about that. So the first, the first few sections of the piece are incredibly um, tough, you know, they're about mm. the sort of tough. And it's worth saying that, that, um, that the poem seems to be like a reminiscence, uh, an old man remembering what it was like. And yet this old man still has this longing mm. to go to sea. I think the, there's such strong imagery in the poem as well, which is another thing that really appealed to me, and it was an absolute gift for music. So much so that I, after, after writing this solo piece, The Lone Seafarer, I went on to make a, a complete setting of the whole poem, which is a half an hour piece for narrator and piano trio. And then after that, I still felt there was more, and um, I wrote a viola concerto, uh, taking the themes from both pieces. So it was an incredibly rich source of inspiration for me. And, and, and I mean, just give us some idea of, of some of the some of the imagery that really kind of turned you on and that, that gave you inspiration. Music. Well, there's there's so much about the weather. There's uh -huh. you know the hail and the sea and and uh, and and the toughness of that journey. Uh, and in fact, why, why don't you re read the, the beginning of the poem? Because, I mean, there's so much imagery just in the first few stanzas of it. Okay, all right. So this is how it starts. This is the truth. The way I toiled, distraught, for days on end, enduring cares and bitter bale within my breast, my keel cleaving endless halls of heaving waves. I would often by the bark's boughs wake the straight night through, steering her clear of clashing cliffs. Cold fetters froze my feet, and hunger seared my heart with sore sea weariness. Hm. That man, lolling on fair land, has no earthly inkling of how I, a wretched wreck on ice-cold seas, weathered each winter, exiled from kith and kin. Hail scoured my skin, and hoar hung heavy. All I ever heard along the iceway was sounding sea, the gannet shanty, hooper and curlew calls and mewling gull were all my gaming mead and mirth. A tempest-tested granite crags, the ice-winged tern would taunt. Spray-feathered ospreys overhead would soar and scream. No kinsman near to fend off need, 
no one to comfort or console. That fine fellow, carefree in his cups, set snugly up in town, cannot conceive the load I hauled along the sea lanes. The dark night deepens, northern snow hardens the soil, and hail hits earth like cold corn. Yet my heart hammers now, yearning anew, wanting the steep salt water road, longing with lust to roam rough seas alone, to seek out some far foreign shore. The mood to wander mills within my mind. So there's, there's so many images there and, and sound as well and sound just in the way the poem is is translated and i think all the alliteration is in the original anglo-saxon mm, as well is, so yeah. cold fetters froze my feet and cold corn and uh they, these these can all be translated into into music so i was using those those sounding sea sounds you know actually in the violin making those sounds but the other thing of course is is the endless cries of birds and I looked those up and, and found out how, how a, an ice-winged turn sounded. And that was an incredibly musical song. It was a, a, bit, like, a, a bit like a chicken, actually, but, but um, kind of uh, a sea chicken. And that went immediately into the, into the violin music. And it's in there in the violin music. Isn't it? It's very clearly there, absolutely notated from, from the sound of the bird. Obviously gulls. Um, but even even the cries, uh, the calls of whales are, are in the piece, which kind of turn into the the sort of banshee like spirit howls as well. Mm. Mm. So it was, and and the loneliness of it, the loneliness of of um, just this one man on on a boat and mm. and coping with with everything that's mm. that's going around. But then the poem resolves in the most beautiful way. And so that all this tribulation has kind of has has a, a purpose, and I love the description at the end of the heaven haven, and 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 I've I've done that in in the music by um, making a, a kind of almost like a sort of plain chanty hymn tune mm -hmm. at, at the end of the violin piece, so it, it becomes very tonal, and um, it it comes to rest at the end of the piece. Maybe you could just read the ending of the poem. Okay, I mean you've got the, the you've got the old man talking about how the world was is never now like it was before, and um, that you can't take, uh, you know, you you can't take, you can't take everything with you, um, and then at the end we get um, the kind of homily, the Christian homily. A man should steer a steadfast course, be constant, clean, and just in judgment. A man should curb his love or loathing, though flame consume his comrade and fire the funeral pyre. For fate is set more surely, God more great than any man surmise. Come, consider where we have a home, how we can travel to it, how our travail here will lead us to the living wellhead and heaven haven of our Lord's love. Thank you. And so that, that's really how the piece ends. And... Um, well, I hope I hope some of that comes through in the, in the music. It was a very important poem for me, and and led to these three pieces. Um, it was a long time ago. I suppose I was young when I wrote it, and now seeing the poem twenty years on is is um, it, it's got more la layers again, and remains, I think, one of the most inspiring poems that I've come across.